Nope, no worries. Hi and welcome to another episode of UTD Scuba Diving TV, coming to you from Dima. Actually, from our neighbor stand, because we're right there, and these guys are right here. Frank, who are you? What do you do? Hi, I'm Frank Milan. I'm with Analytical Industries. Uh, we're part of the PST brand of O2 sensors and sensor technology. Um, AII has been manufacturing O2 sensors for 30 years. In fact, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary this year uh, with manufacturing O2 sensors and analyzers. Uh, we do O2 sensors and analyzers for several applications, industrial, medical, as well as the diving community. Our diving community, uh, you will see a significant amount of O2 sensors within the rebreather applications. Yeah. So exactly, so that's what's my little think of the day. It's like, hey, Frank, give us some tips and tricks, do's and don'ts for us rebreather divers that use these cells every time we dive. So the rebreather sensors are, are extremely sensitive to the environmental conditions. So conditions such as temperature, pressure, and relative humidity will have an effect on the overall life of the sensor. With that being said, when you are out diving and complete your diving trip, the best solution to make sure that your sensors last a little bit longer is to uh, uh, flush out your system, make sure that uh, any type of condensation or, or if any um, liquid that might have gotten in into your head is out of the way so that it doesn't cause any issues with the electronics of the O2 sensor. And, and then making sure that the temperature uh, storage wise is a, a nice cool 75 degrees F. Um, so uh, temperature is, is the biggest... Uh, I'll put the Celsius conversion down here. Yep. <laughs> so the, the temperature is the biggest deterrent to the life of the sensors uh, with the exception of course the O2 concentration. So. Yeah, because the temperature can actually evaporate the electrolyte inside, right? Can evaporate the electrolyte. It'll also expand the, mem the sensing membrane to allow more oxygen to go through and then start the uh, uh, oxidation process, which will consume the lead anode that's inside the, the sensor uh, a lot quicker. Yeah. So having uh, the, the temperature at a, at a lower amount is always a benefit to extending the life of your O2 sensors. Very good, that's good. So there you go, that's one good tip. So, um, yeah, because O2 sensors used in rebreathers aren't exactly the same as the one used in an analyzer, correct? Correct. Uh, we do have some conformal coating because of the uh, high relative humidity uh, in those sensors, um, as well as our extended testing that goes along with our rebreather sensors. With each of our rebreather sensors, you get a digital printout of the uh, testing up to 1.8 ATM, uh, atmosphere, sorry, mm -hmm. and uh, as well as its initial uh, millivolt output at that time. Yeah. So that's what sets it apart from uh, the standard sensors that go into the analyzers. There's additional testing, there's additional form of coding, um, as well as the, um, uh, uh, the overall application that's used with it so that the, uh, the sensors lasts a little bit longer with the rebreather applications. It's the most stringent application that we have uh, within within the galvanic fuel cells. You have both, or, or all three conditions that are really not great for sensors. Temperature, pressure, and relative humidity. Yeah, exactly. And it, that's exactly what we have in the rebreather. High humidity, swinging pressures, and extremely high temperature. Yeah. Yep. So, um, wow, excellent. Anything that comes to mind that you see sometimes in the field people do that's a no-no? Well, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's more about the care after and before. Yeah. Uh, so checking your sensors a little bit more uh, before your dive or before the weekend that you're taking off just to make sure that uh, they're not out of date or the age of the sensors, as well as the care afterwards where you flush out your system, maybe even take out the sensors as a whole Go ahead, put them in your little refrigerator butter dish. That'll slow down the uh, the, the electrochemical process um, and then extend the life of the O2 sensor. That's a good tip, that's a good tip. So in the application, sometimes we rotate the cells. So we have three cells and then after a while we take the first one out and replace that one. And So they're never at the same age. It, is that 
an archaic way of thinking or is it still a good way of, of making sure that you won't have three sales fail at the same time? Correct. You're, you're making sure that the age of the sensor is different so that you don't have those possibilities of an old sensor or several old sensors failing at the same time due to the life of the sensor. Yeah, because I mean, that's still the most common failure, quote unquote, because it's not a failure, it's just the end of it's the life. It's the end of the expected life or yeah. the end of the useful life yeah. of the O2 sensor. The O2 sensor, you'll find that the uh, the, the, the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest you don't want to say failure, but the, ex the yeah. extended life of it, expected life of it, it, that, it that's what it's based on. Yeah. So. so remember, do your cell checks out there, and of course, all you rebreather divers know exactly how to do that. If you don't, give us a call. Before we leave you completely, um, they've actually made a really nice paper, uh, a little flow folder, if you call it, with do's and don'ts on this. And um, I will be getting a, a digital copy of this nice gentleman. So send a link down below and then we can hook you up with one of these. Some very good and useful information with regards to the O2 sensors and how to use them, how to store them, and the specific modes of failure or at the extent or the at the end of their useful life. Perfect. Thanks again. <laughs> well, thanks, Frank. That Thank was you. super enlightening. Have Appreciate the it, Ben. Yep. Show and, uh, enjoy the enjoy. rest of the DEMA show. Take care. We can enjoy our coffee again. Yep. Thanks.